Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to why do Muslims why do Muslims don't marry non-Muslims? So without wasting time, let's get into the video. <laughs> You are gentlemen, as I, I see. Everybody here that I look at is a male so far. Now, suppose you went home tonight, every one of these distinguished gentlemen. Yes. And all of your daughters chose this day to tell you right. that they had decided to marry the Jewish boy down the street right. Right. or the Christian right. boy that was walking around. Young people, often they start all these things. And then how do you speak to them when you say, look, the Jew is my brother, the Christian is my brother, but we don't get married. And then you come back to white doesn't want to marry black, and then everybody passes laws. So intermarriage or what they decided, what if your son came home and said, I have been a good Muslim for 30 years, but suddenly I have decided to become a Christian. I mean, so what do you say? Yes. Okay. Your second question about marriage. Islam tells us, you see, in detail now, whom we can and whom we can't. We follow this biblical injection to the letter where the Bible says that an idolater or an idolater thou shalt not marry. Now we who uphold that. An idolater and an idolater thou shalt not marry. So my son falls in love with a Hindu girl. My religion says, no, you can't marry her. No matter how beautiful she is, no matter how much she allures. What? He said, you can't marry. Now, racially, with the Hindus, most of the Hindus, we are one language group. We have the same racial stock. We carry the same surnames. We enjoy the same dishes. But because of our religious uh, concept, idea of God, my religion says, no, you can't marry an idolater, an idolatress. I can, my religion allows me to marry a Christian woman or a Jewess. It does allow you it to marry? It does allow. It does allow know that. reason. The reason. There's a reasoning behind it. He said, look, we are so close. If I marry a Christian, a Jewess, for example, I would be the last man to say anything abusive about any of the Jewish heroes. Moses, David, Solomon, Jesus. We have the highest respect for them. So this wife of mine is Jewess. She will be still at home with me. In other words, I respect Moses, I respect David, Solomon, all the prophets. What do I am going to tell her with her and reason with her is, so come dear, now come a step forward. You have been at a certain level of religious education. Come two steps forward. One is to accept Jesus and then accept Muhammad as well. So I am asking her to come to a higher level of understanding religion. To the Christian woman in this country, when I said that at first, that look, we are allowed to marry Christian women. So the white men in the audiences, when I delivered talks, they were thinking, say, yeah, 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 I know why. So I said, why? He said, just because we are whites. You think now marrying a white woman is a superior thing to do? I said, no, no, no. Even if the Christian woman is an African woman, she is a Hottentot, she is a Bushman, she is Christian, I can marry her. Because again, we are so close. We accept Jesus as one of the mightiest messengers of God. We accept him as the Messiah, we accept his miraculous birth, we accept his many miracles. The only point of real difference between me and my spouse, that Christian lady would be, that I would say, look, he is not God. He is not the begotten son of God. But everything else, we have a common denominator. We have one with the Jew. We have a common denominator with the Christian. So we said, we can get them and more easily they can be absorbed in the house of Islam. Because whatever you believe, we believe, plus a step further. But now my daughter can't marry a Hindu man, nor can she marry a Jew, nor can she marry a Christian. Now the Hindu is understood being an idol worshiper. But now you say, what about the Jew and the Christian? I can marry a Jewess and I can marry a Christian woman. Why can't my daughter marry a Jew or mm -hmm. a Christian? Yeah. Now the reason is that you see the Christian husband of my daughter, he's got no respect for Muhammad. He's going to use an offensive language. 
He's going to say Muhammad is an imposter. Why? Because that's Not his training. No, that's his training. Because as soon as you say, as soon as you say that you accept Muhammad as a prophet, you are a Muslim. You see, when you say, you have, I say, look, Muhammad, you, you will say, look, Muhammad was a great man. Everybody says so. He was a mighty man. You know, he created a nation and an empire and a religion. He is supposed to have left behind a book like the Quran. So he said, look, I take off my hat to the man. He's the great. And so many people say he was one of the greatest men that ever lived. Michael H. Hark in his top hundred. He puts Muhammad number one. Yes. Jews Masarman, you know, in his uh, book on, on the Turks. The history of top the Turks. hundred men. Right. In the top hundred. I mean, then Jews Masarman. Yeah, in in the, the, the history, who are these great leaders? And Lamartine, in his history of the Turks, he says, if greatness of purpose, smallness of means, and outstanding results are the three criteria of human greatness, who could dare to compare any great man in modern history with Muhammad? He's daring people, bring your candidates. So in other words, now, from that point of view, the Christian, the Westerner, will be prepared to concede that Muhammad was a great man, but he was an imposter. In other words, he was, not, he was a false prophet. So that's the biggest barrier now. Because if you accept that he was also a prophet, prophet means that God chose him. If God chose Muhammad, now Muhammad tells you that the flesh of the swine thou shall not eat. Now you can say, look, I like pork chops. You know, all my life I've been enjoying it. He said, look, this man is a prophet of God and is authorized by God to tell you now, don't eat the pig. Don't drink alcohol. No promiscuousness. Don't dance or court or date women. So if every step now, if you believe in this man, that he is a prophet of God, you have to listen to him. It's not just a word saying, I believe he's a prophet. It means nothing. When you say he is a prophet of God, what does it imply? It means that he is chosen by God. Now, if he's chosen by God to guide you, to tell you now, according to your capacity now, that you are not to touch alcohol, you are not to take interest, you're not Whatever he tells you, it becomes binding on you, which you are not prepared to accept, who the Jew or the Christian. Mr. Dida, I have to, I, last time I was. As usual, Amit did that sharing his knowledge with the people. Um, I don't understand when he says Muslims can marry women from um, who are Christian or are Jews. I really understand that because otherwise the only difference that I'm seeing here is that a man will be the head in that relationship and he will control how things usually turn out but when it's a woman and they want maybe a christian or a jew that man is going to be one is going to be wanting to be head in that relationship and control things hence maybe it can be tough um for them to convert but otherwise i've come across a lot of people not come across i've actually read I think even more than five different cases of where a man has actually converted because they're dating a Muslim um, woman. It does happen. It does, does, does happen. And I was thinking it's actually not a bad thing. If you tell me today, if a Muslim person today wants to marry me, I'll be down. If they are going to make me live a better life, I will really, really be down. I guess that's why it's not hard for certain men to uh, give up whatever they've believed in and actually convert to Islam because they've seen a better way of living. Like Didat said, it's like an elevation. Yes, you know this, you know that, but this is even better. You understand? That's how I'm looking at this. Um, I don't know, though. Because he said it's not allowed but I've seen cases of people actually women actually dating men and those men convert so does it mean now in this day that we're living it's acceptable maybe during his time it wasn't but is it now acceptable and what's the way forward what do um, if there's any women watching this what's your take on the issue are you open to dating someone who's willing to actually 
compared to Islam or it's just a no-go area. And another thing he spoke about, oh, what I admire most about this is there's nothing wrong with Muslims dating Muslims. It's actually a good thing. Other races should do the same thing, you know. There's nothing wrong with you guys just trying to build your souls. The Muslims build themselves, the black people marry black people build themselves, the white people marry the white people build themselves. Because I laughed at when he said um, the guy thought marrying a white person is supreme. No one is above anything. Everyone is just great to me, you know. I don't care if they are Muslim, I don't care if they are white, I don't care if they are black, I don't care if whatever they are, I am for the idea of marrying your own people. Black, marry black. Muslims, Muslims, white, white, Indians, Indians. I feel like it's actually easier. Culture is going to be the same, language is going to be the same. Okay, not language, because sometimes you marry people from different countries. And I feel like you relate more because you've got a common denominator or background in place. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.